Over the weekend, massive demonstrations were organized across different European countries against the war in Ukraine. Protesters demanded that NATO and its allies should stop prolonging the conflict through the endless weapon deliveries to Ukraine. Instead, many stated that the money being spent on this death and destruction can be better utilized for social spending on homes, healthcare, food, and fuel for the people. Das Weiße Haus Joe Biden hat mit Rüstungskonzernen über viele Jahre Verträge abgeschlossen, also für viele Jahre Verträge abgeschlossen, dass sie die Ukraine mit Waffen beliefern. Für viele Jahre soll die Kriegsmaschinerie munitioniert werden, damit ihr nicht die Waffen ausgehen. Was ist das für eine wahnsinnige und zynische Politik? Und die stellen sich dann auch noch hin und sagen, das sei Solidarität mit der Ukraine. Was ist das für eine Lüge? Das ist doch keine Solidarität. Das ist das genaue Gegenteil dessen. We're seeing all across the globe, people raise their voices for peace. Almost every nation in the global south, including the ones that make up the majority of humanity. We're now seeing across Europe, rising anti-war demonstrations around the cost of living crisis in particular that has been sparked by the war and by the sanctions related to it. So everywhere we are seeing working class people, oppressed people, really everyone who is feeling the pinch of this unbelievable cost of living crisis start to question whether or not the endless fuel of war is part of the problem as a part of the as opposed to a part of the solution on february 24 the first anniversary of the war in ukraine china issued a 12-point proposal for peace emphasizing the need for immediate resumption of talks between ukraine and russia in this proposal china confirmed its commitment to sovereignty independence and territorial integrity of all countries and asked the world community to refrain from any kind of provocative acts. But any such attempts at negotiation and peace have been regularly dismissed by the West. And it's not about fair values in this war, but about the NATO and the umfang of the American influence zone. And that's why we are here, so that this senseless death will stop. If you look at the Ukraine war, and this is a war between really NATO and Russia being fought in Ukraine, we'll realize that the larger agenda that the West had was how to goad Russia into a war with continuous expansion of NATO. And this expansion of NATO obviously predates Ukraine. It started with the Baltics, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Romania, a whole number of countries, and also a number of missile stations being put, particularly in Romania and Poland, which Russians were objecting to. And then, of course, in 2008, the declaration that Georgia and Ukraine should be a part of NATO, and bringing, therefore, uh, NATO virtually the doorsteps of Moscow. Russia objected to that. Donbass, or as a region, had Russian ethnic people, linguistic majority over there, who did not want to have a unitary uh, Ukraine imposed on that, by which the language identity would also be wiped out, which is what the post to uh, Maidan uh, so-called revolution brought about for them. The declaration that Donbas region, the identity of the Russian ethnicity as well as linguistic identity would be raised. And the fact that whole lot set of things took place over there, which led ultimately to the revolt in the Donbass region. And you know, in the, if you remember in 2014, that struggle didn't get resolved. It was resolved with the Minsk I, Minsk II Accord, which would have promised that there would be a regional autonomy for them, which never materialized, instead of which what they did was, the West did was to arm Ukraine, make it the second largest military power in Europe, and hope that by having this war with Russia, Russia would be weakened, the economic sanctions would take Russian economy down, and therefore, possibly a regime change would take place in Russia. That has not happened. And unless Russia's basic arguments regarding what is going to be the European balance of power military 
accords, how will they be treated? Will NATO stop expanding further? Will the Donbass region, the Ukraine, within Ukraine, the sections which identify themselves as Russian speakers, Russian ethnicity, have an autonomy, like many other countries, the kind of autonomy that exists, for instance, in Belgium, Switzerland, and so on. Can something like that occur? Those are the questions which are not, complete, not being addressed com completely. And in fact, the whole this whole battle, this whole war is being pitched as Russian aggression against Ukraine without addressing the fundamental issue of the Donbass region, the people. And also the fact that uh, Russia has a strategic issue that how far can NATO come and when will NATO stop its eastward march. The United States, European Union and other NATO members have supplied billions of dollars worth of weapons to Ukraine, including tanks. There are talks about the possible supply of warplanes to Ukraine as well. The US alone has provided weapons more than 100 billion US dollars to Ukraine so far. This has come at the cost of the rights of the people of the country, who now have to pay higher healthcare premiums and continue to incur student loan debt. The opposition to the war and US war efforts is steadily rising in the country. Well over 60 organizations are building here in the United States for the March 18th Fund People's Needs, Not the War Machine demonstration on the anniversary of the start of the Iraq War. There is going to be an outpouring of people who are going to be saying no to endless war, no to a proxy war in Ukraine, no to all of this black hole money pit that the military industrial complex has become. Fund people's needs, the critical things, housing, education, healthcare, infrastructure, jobs, all the things that our communities are being starved of. So March 18th here in the United States, I think we will see the US join many countries around the world and having significant people come out and raise their voices for peace.